jam-packed with traffic as it is now. There are numerous command posts here with Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Anne Arundel County, Howard County, uh, that have responded to the location. You have the United States Coast Guard helicopter here doing search and rescue operations. You have the Maryland State Police doing search and rescue operations. And you have Baltimore County Police helicopter here as well dealing with this rescue slash recovery here at the Key Bridge. We don't know how many vehicles are actually in the water. Fortunately, that time of the morning, it's not that heavily traveled. However, can you imagine driving across the bridge and all of a sudden there's no bridge there? So we're still going to monitor this. Good. Yeah, the only thing we can pretty much see right now is the container ship. Uh, we have been watching and monitoring the uh, rescue operations on the city fire ground channels. And we can pretty much tell you that if you figure where the road travels, that is totally underwater. Uh, where the CO superstructure was, the only thing that's sticking out is what was really, really high uh, that went across the key bridge as far as the superstructure. But as far as any pieces or any portion of the roadway, there is none. It's underwater. Uh, and we can't see any remnants of any vehicles. Now I do know they do have divers in the water conducting searches and trying to do rescue operations. And it's very difficult. You know, it's bad enough that the water is blocked, but at night when you can't see anything at all, it's extremely hazardous for those divers trying to conduct search and rescue uh, operations here. There's numerous, like I said, police boats, fire boats that have responded to the scene and we're still trying to get more on this and as we do, we'll update you. Reporting live in Sky Team 11, I'm Captain Roy Taylor. No, there's no fire. There's no fire on the container ship. They were searching the top of the container ship to see if there were any vehicles or any individuals that might have, you know, fallen victim to the line on top of that. The smoke you saw was actually from the engine room for the, that develops power uh, for the ship. But the, we don't see any remnants of any type of fire, nor has there been any type of fire suppression that has been uh, going on here at this container ship. So that's you know, a non-event at the present time. Uh, however, like I said, the Coast Guard and between the tugboats and fire rescue boats, they're all here standing by. If something were to break out, it would be quickly uh, taken care of or uh, addressed, I would say, here at the location. So unless you have any other questions, we're going to send it back to you in the studio.
Two people from the water. One individual refused service and refused transport. Essentially, that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. At this time, we have multiple air assets from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore Police Department, as well as multiple Marine assets from around the region including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, as well as multiple local and state police 
uh, agencies, uh, National Resources Police, um, BPD Special Ops Unit is in here, Maryland State Police is here. We have multiple resources. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. We have a large area that we have to search. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. We believe at this point, we may be looking for, we may be looking for upwards of seven individuals. That's the latest information we have. However, what I will say is, is the information that I'm giving you right now is as of right now. That's what we know right now. Um, this is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating. Therefore, information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning. Um, over the next 8 to 12 hours, you can expect to continue to see um, our air and maritime assets functioning um, out on the water and in the air above. Um, we need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, and we need to continue our subsurface search, which is including um, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar. We have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So. Um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Mayor, Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, everyone, this is an unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families, uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is an ongoing active uh, research uh, that we're having right now. We're gonna continue, as you heard from Chief Wallace, to throughout as long as we have to be doing that, we will do it. Uh, but we have to be thinking about the families and people impacted, uh, folks who uh, we have to try to find and save. This is what our focus should be on right now. Uh, we're going to continue to work in partnership with every part of government to do everything that we can uh, to get us through the other side of this tragedy. And with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Olszewski. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Um, I think we all awoke this morning to an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we know that there will be families and individuals impacted by this, regardless of what happens the rest of the way out. Uh, so I would just echo the mayor in lifting up prayers for those who are impacted, but also ask that our residents pay, pray for our first responders. Um, you know, they have been on scene since very early in the morning, um, not only conducting initial search and rescue operations, but planning for uh, additional ones as the sun comes up. And, um, you know, the work that they do cannot be understated. And we just, I want to just thank them for all that they are doing and, and will do in the hours and days ahead. Uh, we know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently. Uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support, just as we want to thank um, our state partners for the resources they've offered up, uh, as well as uh, the federal partners who have already reached out. Uh, the mayor and I have talked to the governor. We've, we've heard from the secretary of transportation. Uh, so collectively, we thank everyone for uh, their thoughts, their well wishes. Uh, but again, this is a very active situation, and we want to just thank uh, the chief and our teams for all the great work they're doing. And with that, I'll turn things back over to the chief. <coughs> thank you, County Executive Olszewski. Uh, we do some Q&A right now. Now we're just going to go around and have everyone uh, present one question. Chief, can you tell us where the crew of the ship is? Um, you also mentioned, too, that uh, two people were rescued. Who made the first 911 call? And there were reports that it was a crew on 
the deck of the ship working at that point? Can you confirm any of that? The latest information we have on the sh on the crew of the ship is that they are still on board the ship. Um, there's been comms between the ship crew and the Coast Guard. So as, po as part of the uh, overall operation, we communicate through the Coast Guard with the ship. And, and I'm sorry, your other questions? There were two people taken. Who made the first 911 call? I don't know who's who made that call yet. Okay, and there were, were there other workers on the, the deck of the ship at this, or the deck of the bridge at this point? We had heard that information. Can you confirm that? We were being told there were workers on the bridge. We have yet to confirm that. Um, we'll work with MDTA to, to, you know, obviously to get that information. About how many cars were on that ship? Last question. Uh, on the uh, on the deck of the bridge at the time of collapse. Do you know? That? Don't have a number. I can tell you our sonar has detected the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. I don't have a count of that yet. Um, Chief, you, you mentioned upwards of seven individuals that you're looking for. We've heard reports of as many as 20 individuals. Can you just paint a more clear picture of about how many people actually fell into the water, how many people you might be uh, looking to rescue, and also if you can give an idea of how many vehicles, although you might not have the answer, but really just the search and <clears throat> Yeah, I'll start with the last one. So I don't know how many vehicles yet. I know that we have detected the presence of vehicles. As far as the number between the seven and 20, that's been a dynamic count um, throughout the morning, just given the fact that we haven't yet nailed that number down. We do believe that at least seven are involved in that, at least seven at this point. That fell into water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I know you said the crew was accounted for for Guard on deck. Do we know if any of the crew members were part of these at least seven people that may have been in the water? We do not. Thanks, ask um, survivability of waters around this thing is not very long. I want the shift focus to become um, more of a, a, a salvage operation. So we'll be guided by, by our dive teams. We will determine what the temperature of the water is. The other issue that we have out there is this water is 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 current uh, influenced. So right now we think the tide is coming back in. That adds a bit of a challenge to us also. We can certainly dive in these conditions, but we have to take a lot of factors into play, right? The fact that there may be trauma involved, they have been in, in the water an extended period of time. Um, but also remember, we're battling darkness. So, you know, it's, it's quite possible that we may have somebody there that we've not seen yet. Um, and as they work closer to the debris field, um, you know, they'll, they'll obviously make those determinations. But we're going to rely on the experts, which are our, our, our dive masters that are here, our dive team, to tell us when they believe we've reached that, that, that non-survivability point. Thank you. Yes, sir. We, we do not have that information with regard to the investigation. I would refer that to, to law enforcement. My my focus since 1.40 this morning has been that rescue operation. So, so far there's been no indication that any kind of like an emergency dispatch came from that ship before? I have no information about that, ma'am. Have you, have you been able to talk to the pilot, the American pilot on, on that bridge? The, the, the pilot on the vessel? Yeah. We have not talked to the pilot on the vessel. The, Rescue personnel, the rescue operation, we have not interacted. Just back over here. I don't have age and I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't I don't have age and gender on either. One patient refused service, right? It really they weren't injured. The second patient, however, was seriously injured and is at an area trauma center. Are you including them in the seven, at least seven? We don't know yet if they're part of that seven. Okay. The, 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 the patient is injured severely enough that we've not been able to debrief that patient. That seven number, that come from people witnessing cars down? Like where did that number come from? Or is that just from the sonar hits that you got? No, that was the initial information that we got as we were arriving on the scene, that number. And that number, again, as I said earlier, has fluctuated, right? <coughs> but that, that seven has been a consistent number. Oh well, wow. dozens. Um, yeah, dozens. I mean, locally, you know, fire department-wise, Baltimore County's here, Howard County's here, Harford uh, was here, PG was here, 
um, Anne Arundel, um, of course Baltimore City, and a lot of those agencies are here by virtue of the fact that they may have specialized equipment that we need during an incident like this. So um, we're we're bringing in the equipment specific to the operation right now, and then even even law enforcement agencies have a lot of the same marine ops equipment as we do. So given the incident is so big, we try to force multiply and just bring as many resources in as we can so that we can really blanket a large area for a search. We don't, we've not been able to confirm that we actually have an active fuel spill from the vessel. Um, we've had odors of diesel fuel. The Maryland Department of the Environment is here um, as well as the Coast Guard. So they would take leads on that as well. We hope as the sun comes up a little bit with the air assets that are up to get a much better picture. If we do have a fuel spill, what the impact has been so far. Yeah, Maryland State Police has been here. Um, Foxtrot is also working this. There, there are two air resources right now. Um, I don't know that we won't bring any more in, but right now they're the two primary. Um, you know, air reconnaissance on something on the open water is just, it's an invaluable resource. And we've been very fortunate to have it because as we put people out in the dark on the water to conduct searches, they have that degree of overwatch from those assets. So it's it's been an invaluable resource for us. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Executive, uh, we're talking about search and rescue. I know that. And that's where the focus is right now. Uh, I was awakened with this news. We're all awakened with this news. I've seen the video. What, what, what do you make of the totality of this incident? What, what are you thinking about what you've seen and what this community has experienced? Well, this is a, a tragedy that you can never imagine, right? And uh, I was awake when Chief Wallace called me, but never would you think that you would see, physically see, the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. And you just think about, most importantly, and which is what we all should be thinking about right now, nothing but those families and people that are impacted and those people who are risking their lives right now from not just Baltimore City and Baltimore County, but all over this state to try to save lives. That should be our focus, the preservation of life, because no one wants to see that happen, let alone someone in their family, someone that they know uh, uh, be injured in an incident like this. We'll take two more questions. Your, your, your thoughts about what, you, what this community has experienced this morning. Uh, look, I, I think that folks are stunned I think folks are reeling, uh, and I think that's particularly true for people who are worried about their loved ones right now. Uh, I think there'll be plenty of time to talk about what this bridge means to the community, what it means for commerce, but at the end of the day, right now this is about the humanity of people who are impacted and the men and women who are out there trying to save lives and, and recover folks off the bridge. So um, I think there'll be plenty of, plenty of opportunity to talk about that, but really, uh, right now and for the foreseeable hours ahead, this is really about focusing on the search and rescue efforts. And I want to just, again, thank the chief for his leadership and, and for all of the affiliated partners that we have working on this. That's that's not my focus here, ma'am. That's part of the law enforcement investigation. So I would, I would defer to, to the proper authorities for that. No, thank, uh, thank you. I, I spoke with Secretary Bouges directly. Uh, he and his team said that they're going to obviously work with us throughout this incident and work with not just uh, the city and county, but really the state of Maryland uh, to make sure uh, that we have every resource that, that he and the federal government can provide. How long is it going to take to rebuild this mayor? I think right now, sir, uh, listen, we shouldn't even be having that discussion right now. The discussion right now should be about the people, the souls, the lives that we're trying to save. Uh, there will be a time to discuss about a bridge and how we get a bridge back up. But right now, there are people in the water that we have to get out. And that's the only thing we should be talking about. And to go back to the question about the, the terrorism, there is absolutely no indication that there's any terrorism, that, that this was done on purpose. 
Our criminal intel is working with the FBI and other federal and state agencies to get all the intel that we have, but there's absolutely no indication that it was intentional. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I want to thank you all. Um, I will be advising you, updating you on the next one. Will that be here, Kevin? Thank you. Yeah.
part of the pavement that I can see, I'm gonna zoom in here, is actually laying on the ship. I don't see anything else. I'm, it must be underwater at this point. It looks as though the ship is called the Dolly. And uh, we saw a lot of these rescue boats as we first arrived dotting the water. Lots of searchlights from the rescue boats. Lots of helicopters. We noticed uh, several state troopers. There's one passing right now. As well as the Coast Guard. It looked as though they may have been checking this
at our first unified joint command news briefing at the Key Bridge I-695 in Baltimore, Maryland. I am going to introduce to you our Maryland Secretary of Transportation, Paul Wiedefeld. It's spelled P-A-U-L, Wiedefeld, W-I-E-D-E-F-E-L-D. -E -E Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> at approximately 1.30 a.m., a cargo ship leaving the Port of Baltimore struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge. This caused a catastrophic collapse of the bridge. First responders from the Maryland Transportation Authority, the Toll Authority, and our federal, state, and local partners immediately responded to the scene. At this time, this is an active search and rescue mission. We know there were, <clears throat> we know there were individuals on the bridge at the time of the collapse working on the bridge, contractors for us. Our partners from the U.S. Coast Guard will provide some more information momentarily. In terms of traffic, drivers should avoid I-695 Southeast Carter and use I-95 I and I-895 as alternatives. I-695 is being detoured southbound at exit 43, the Peninsula Expressway, and northbound at exit 2, Route 10. Vessel traffic into and out of the port of Baltimore suspended until further notice but the port is still open for truck trans, trans, transactions. Obviously, we're very thankful for the first responders who are carrying out their efforts in these rescues and that, that, they're, that they're doing this all through the night and today. And we're praying, obviously, for everyone's safe return. We'll continue to provide updates to you, the next one being approximately 9.30. With that, with that, I will turn it over to Lieutenant Colonel Palmer from the U.S. Coast Guard. Good morning, my name is Lieutenant Commander Aaron Palmer from Coast Guard Sector Maryland National Capital Region. I'm the current Acting Chief of Response for the sector. The Coast Guard's primary mission right now is search and rescue, looking for any survivors in the water. On scene, we currently have three small boats. We also have Coast Guard Cutter Mako, an 87-foot patrol boat. We have a helicopter from Air Station Atlantic City and we're working with numerous federal, state, and local partners on scene on these search and rescue efforts. Thank you. You going to take any questions you have at this time? What role is the FBI playing in the investigation at this time? FBI has basically uh, to see if there's any terrorism connection, which there is not. Can you any confirm confirmed how many people you're looking for? No confirmed fatalities. Any recovered from the water alive? Um, that's still under, um, still the rescue what mission is, is still fine? active. Do you have any sense of what happened to the actual cargo ship? There were some reports that it suffered some major power outages just before it crashed into the uh, Too early in the investigation. Was a pilot operating the ship coming in and out of the port? Was it a port's authorized pilot or was it uh, the captain of the ship? No, the pilots uh, move ships in and out of the port of Baltimore. What's happening? Pilots move of ships in and out of Baltimore. What's happening to all the other ships that are waiting the backup at this point? How are you navigating that? Basically, we're we're communicating with them. They obviously understand the situation, and we'll uh, we'll deal with the logistics of that later. Has the crew uh, been evacuated from the ship, and has the Coast Guard been able to make contact with the pilot on the ship? That's all being done right now. Um, I don't know the exact details of where they all are, but yes, oh, obviously we're contacting them. Is this being investigated as suspicious? If it, in any type of incident like this, the FBI would be engaged just to make sure, and that's what they did. Any idea how many vehicles are in the water? Can you, can you, um, just any idea how could this happen? This bridge too early. Should not have collapsed like this. Too early investigation. Well, could you how long will the port be closed? Do you know how deep the water is there, and in, in sort of this area where it happened, the conditions? Approximately 50 feet. Yeah. 50 feet. How many people are you looking for? That is still that is what we're doing. Um, we're we're basically searching for for everyone that was potentially on the bridge. As you can imagine, it's the middle of the night. You know, you know, what type of traffic was there? Uh, how many workers were there? Workers, you know, they obviously come to a project, but other workers show up sometimes. So that's what we're investigating right now. Is this unprecedented? Is it anything like this ever happened? Not in Baltimore. Can you talk more about the workers on the bridge, what was going on, and how many vehicles you think might actually be in the water? There were, um, they were basically doing some concrete deck repair. Uh, we don't have the number of the vehicles. Do we know who they work for? Uh, I don't have that right offhand. How long will the port be closed? Uh, uh, too, too early to determine. Are you still looking for seven people? 
um, a number of people. That's that's the one number that we've had. But obviously, we're gonna we're researching to see if anyone else was on that bridge. Can you speak to some of the challenges, the freezing water, the current, the darkness this morning as you were searching for individuals? All of all of the above, to be frank. Um, it's, you know, a very very tough situation. Uh, one you know one a.m. in the morning, uh, very little information at that time. You know, it, it happened instantaneously, as you've seen. Number of hours at this point. What can you tell family members who might be watching about any hope that you will still recover survivors? We actually have set up a, a facility for any family members. We have um, mental health professionals there as well, so we are dealing with that. And are you ruling out any kind of intentional uh, motive? That, that we don't see anything that that uh, relates to that at this time. It's an it's an open investigation but there's nothing that points to that in any direction. First calls after the incident come in directly from the ship. When the, when the, when the ship hit there, who, was, who were the first ones to make the 911 calls to kind of alert you? I don't know, I don't have that information. Do you have any indication whether the ship lost power? Uh, it's too early. And just for clarification, I'm last, sorry, last I, question, yeah. please. The port is closed except for trucks moving right. transport out. Right, right. Right. Okay. We'll and we'll be back. We'll be back surely about 9:30. I'm sorry. Too, too early. Obviously, we reached out to a number of engineering you know, companies, and so obviously we have a, a, a long road in front of us to get to that point. Okay. Thank you so much.
concrete ended up wiping out a good section of the pier, well, of the uh, of the bridge here, and it's it's just you know something that you would see in a in a movie or something that you would see like a model railroad uh, scenario where you have a bridge that has fallen down. But uh, I have never seen anything this catastrophic as far as damage. As you see here now, we're showing you the United States Coast Guard vessel that's, I mean, the helicopter that's actually conducting search operations. They have uh, the Baltimore County Police. They have Maryland State Police. They have the Army raid ship from the Air Uh, just to give you another update, there's uh, six tugboats now, six tugboats that have responded to the location here that were on standby. Uh, we're not sure if they're here to take and pull the vessel off the um, uh, the embankment here from the concrete embankment from which it hit the key bridge or what their status is. But uh, a large contingency of personnel that are working to deal with this rescue. Unless you have questions as we get more, we'll update you reporting live in Sky Team 11. I'm Captain Ortiz. just so much technology that is involved with this uh, search and rescue operation here. It's amazing. And, you know, you have Baltimore County working at a certain altitude. You have Maryland State Police working at a certain altitude. You have the United States Coast Guard working at a certain altitude. You have the raid ship <laughs> that's working at a certain altitude. And that's why they put the temporary flight restriction into effect here to make sure that they had a clear path to do their operation without being hindered uh, by any other air traffic in the area. And as we were talking about before, as I look over here, like I said, 895 is really starting to pick up heavy in traffic. 95 is heavy in traffic. And south of the Bay. to be an issue. They just have to <coughs> wait until the rescue operation is over with before they get involved with any type of movement of the vessel. But I don't see this vessel sinking. It looks pretty much intact.
I need to know how much longer you guys want us. They gotta bring barges up here with heavy cranes just to lift the remnants of it. just sitting right on the bow of that ship. There are numerous tugboats here on standby in case their assistance is needed to try and do something with the ship. But I don't see it moving until they're able to lift uh, the portion of the key bridge off the cargo ship and then they'll be able to take it, pull it back to uh, port and deal with it there. And the uh, barges that with these heavy cranes, it's gonna take them a while to get to this location and then they need the weight requirement, the height requirement, just to start doing their operation. We see the Coast Guard come.
familiar with the water and the channels here in the Baltimore area. And they will take and uh, maintain control and operation of the ship vessel here as it works its way through the harbor. You know, he communicates with the captain, com captain communicates with the crew, and uh, they do their due diligence to have a safe operation here. Once the ship is clear, then the pilot, the harbor pilot, comes off the vessel by means of another boat, and then the captain takes over the ship and continues his journey wherever he has to go to. But, uh, like I said, I just don't understand with a ship pilot, you know, you
I'd probably leave the governor. I thought he was already here. Yeah, that's probably what he's going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you all for being here. This morning, our state is in shock, and I want to take this moment to speak directly to the people of our state. To our first responders, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of your courage. I'm in awe of your strength. I'm in awe of everything you do for each and every one of us. You saw a crisis and you said, what can I do to help? 
and our response teams are doing everything in our power to rescue and recover the victims of this collapse literally as we speak. People who, as we speak, are out there are divers, our air assets, people who right now are working to save lives and are doing it because the state asked. And we will update the public as the work continues. To our partners inside and outside of government, I know this has been a long night. We started coordinating immediately after the Key Bridge collapsed. We've been standing together every step of the way from our county leadership to our city leadership, to our state leadership, to our federal leadership. And I'm grateful to call each and every one of you not just colleagues, but I'm grateful to call you friends. And to the people of Baltimore, and each and every one of the 6.3 million Marylanders who call our state home, I recognize that many of us are hurting right now. I recognize that many of us are scared right now. And so I want to be very clear about where everything stands. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis, and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. That is our pledge, and that's our commitment, and we're going to keep that commitment. And lastly, to the victims of this tragedy and their loved ones, all of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss, we're thinking of you, and we will always be thinking of you. We pray for the construction workers who are on the key bridge, and we pray for everyone who has been touched by this tragedy and their families and all of their loved ones. But Maryland, we will get through this because that is the Maryland spirit, and that's what Maryland is made of. We are Maryland tough, and we are Baltimore strong. So in the face of heartbreak, we come together, we embrace one another, and we come back stronger. That's what we've always done, that's what we'll continue to do, and that's what we're gonna get done together. And we're gonna pray for Baltimore. And I'd like to turn this over to Senator Van Hollen, who's done a remarkable job in our fellow delegation in providing support, so thank you, Senator. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor said, we come together. We come together in Baltimore, we come together in Maryland. First of all, our hearts go out to all those who are on the bridge and their loved ones. We pray for them. Our gratitude goes out to the first responders who, as we speak, are out there continuing to conduct search and rescue operations. I want to thank the Governor, the local, the Mayor, County Executive, all the people gathered here as part of Team Baltimore and Team Maryland. And the federal government is with them as a partner. The Coast Guard, as we speak, is also part of this mission. Coast Guard cutters, Coast Guard aviation assets. I spoke uh, twice today uh, with Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg has pledged that they will do everything they can to very quickly release emergency response funds for this important project. The National Highway Transportation Administration Administrator is on his way to Baltimore if he's not here already. They will be releasing those early funds once all, all the parties are fully engaged. Second, the National Transportation Safety Board, I talked to the chair this morning, uh, she and her team will be conducting an investigation of what happened. And finally, the Army Corps of Engineers, naval assets for looking below the surface and clearing, all of this is going to be part of the effort. The governor is leading Team Maryland. 
the mayor and the county executive, of course, Team Baltimore. Uh, but I'm just here to say, t together with Ben Cardin, Senator Cardin, um, and Congressman Fumé and others, the federal government is your partner in this effort. Thank you, and again, to the people of our state and the people of this great city. We're with you. We love with you. We will get through this together. Thank you, Governor. Morning again, uh, Paul Wiedefeld, Secretary of Transportation. Just a few updates uh, since our meeting this morning. Um, the uh, the crew that was out there working was basically repairing potholes, just so you understand that. It had nothing to do with a structural issue at all at the, at the, in the facility. Um, at this time, one person has been uh, rescued and so far, and <clears throat> our, continue, our efforts continue in, in terms of that. Um, engineers are on site right now determining both some of the structural issues, obviously some of the debris field, and we'll start to work that, but we'll work hand in hand with the NTSB before we take any further action in that area. With that, I did want to introduce the FBI for a few comments as well. Hello, my name is Bill Del Bano. I'm the special agent in charge of the Baltimore Field Office. First and foremost, I want to say that our hearts go out to everyone that is impacted by this tragedy, especially the victims and their families. On behalf of the FBI, I would like to say that we are with you, we're with Baltimore, and we're with the partners every step of the way. The FBI, on very first, looking at and assessing this matter from an investigative standpoint, I want to be clear that there is no specific or credible information to suggest that there are ties to terrorism in this incident. The FBI has been part of this response from the beginning. We uh, came within one hour to the command post and quickly lashed up with our very strong partners all along the way. We will bring whatever resources that the FBI has to bear We've already brought our crisis response, our victim services, and just recently our underwater search evidence recovery teams are on site. And we will continue to provide all those resources as long as it takes. And as the investigation goes on, we will take it to its logical conclusion along with our partners. To the pe people of Baltimore, to the public, I ask you to be patient as we go through this and as information becomes available to us. And lastly, I want to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to ev everyone who uh, in the FBI and counts on the FBI. We will always bring what we need to the people of Baltimore and we are with you. I'd next like to introduce the Coast Guard. Good morning. The Coast Guard is still actively searching at this time. We are using response boat crews from two of our local Coast Guard stations, one of our Hilo crews from an air station in Atlantic City, and also one of our Cutter crews on one of our 87-foot patrol boats. We will continue to work with our local, state, and federal partners during this tragedy. Thank you. Governor, Governor, as far as you are aware, was the collapse of that bridge inevitable as that ship hit that part of the bridge? No, we're, we're still in the process of investigating exactly what happened. Uh, so we, we don't have any further details uh, about whether or not it was inevitable or not. But no structural issue with the bridge? No, there was, uh, in fact, the bridge was actually fully up to code, so we have no further information about uh, what, was, what, what happened during that time. Governor, is all, shipping, is all shipping in and out of the port now stopped completely? And do you have any estimate very early on as to how long it will be before shipping can resume to the Port of Baltimore? Yeah, we, we, don't, have, uh, we don't have any estimates on timeline because right now our exclusive focus is on saving lives. Exactly. Our exclusive focus is on search and rescue. Can you give us a better sense for the number? Because we had heard, I know Mr. Wiedefeld said one had been rescued, but earlier from Baltimore we heard that two had been rescued. Can you tell us the total numbers we're talking about that may be, that you're searching for, and how many have been rescued? Well, 
There are eight individuals. Uh, six are being uh, searched for right now. One is at, um, was taken to the hospital, and one is uh, not in the hospital that we we're speaking to. So six unaccounted for? Yes. And does that involve individuals that may have been in vehicles that went in the water? Is that just the construction? Do we know? We believe it's a construction crew. What about, what okay, about so we vehicles? don't think there's anyone in, in vehicles in the water? No, we do not believe so. Okay, Governor, we'll take what, questions right here. Take this question here. Governor, two questions. Quick, how quickly did you find out about what happened here, and what was your reaction when you heard the scale of what just occurred at that bridge earlier today? Well, I mean, I it was. Uh, I think it was probably within minutes of, of, of everything, less than an hour, when I know that my phone first rang. Uh, and, you know, first from the, the mayor of Baltimore and also from our chief of staff. Um, and it was... Uh, we know the key bridge. I've ridden over the key bridge countless times. So many of us know the key bridge because it is our normal commute. This is a place that is a normal commute route for over 30,000 Marylanders every single day. And so to hear the words that the key bridge has collapsed, it's shocking um, and heartbreaking. And immediately uh, the first thought and the first ideas go back to what happened to the people? Where are we? What was the impact on on on, on human life? Um, but for every single one of us who are Marylanders, the words that the key bridge is gone, it it still shakes us because for over for 47 years that's all we've known. And so this is uh this is this is uh not just not just unprecedented from what we're seeing and what we're looking at today. Um, it's heartbreaking. Governor, can you confirm that the crew on the ship uh, alerted authorities that it had lost propulsion? Uh, we, we can we can confirm that uh, that the, the crew uh, notified uh, notified authorities of a, of a power issue. Yes. And that they had lost power on the ship. Yes. Was there any ability to shut down the bridge? Or is that going to take the question right here? Correct. A total of eight, excuse me, a total of eight, <clears throat> one rescued in the hospital, one uh, not in hospital, but it is, uh, we have communicated with that person, and then six that we are searching for. And all construction workers were subcontrolled with all eight of them? The, um, yes, they were all related to the construction program, Wait, so yes. We heard that multiple vehicles went into the water. Any word on how many vehicles went into the water and the condition of those not at this time. All right, we're going to shift over here. Was there any way to uh, shut down the bridge? Was there enough time for that distress call to trigger something like that? Now, the, the thing that we know is that, uh, you know, even as the boat was coming in, you know, we had a ship that was coming in at eight knots. Uh, so coming in at a, at a, at a, very, a very rapid speed. Um, we do know that uh, the investigation is, is, is currently going on. Uh, but I, I have to say I'm thankful for the folks who, who once the, you know, once the warning came up, and once notification came up uh, that there was a mayday, who literally by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, uh, these people are heroes. They saved lives last. They saved lives last night. Go, 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 go. Uh, yeah, Brian. The focus is on rescue now and humanity. Yeah. But looking forward, is there any vision for how long it could possibly take to remove the wreckage to rebuild? This is going to be a long-term build. It's going to be a build that's going to require every facet and every aspect of our society. Um, it is something that I can tell you we are going to get this done. We are going to make sure that that this is is not just not just rebuilt, but that we are going to rebuild in a way that remembers the people who this tragedy has impacted. And also do it in a way that uh, that honors the community uh, that it serves. But um, but right now, uh, I could not give you any form of estimate on timing or, or cost. Right now, uh, my and all of our exclusive focus is we're just trying to save lives. Can the mayor talk on the state of emergency locally, please? 
Yes, thank you. Uh, listen, we, we know the governor issued a state of emergency, but we at the local level uh, felt the need to do that too because there may be some things that we have to encumber with our fire department and other agencies that we'll be able to pull down support for as we all work together again as we're focused right now on saving lives and working through this unspeakable tragedy. In the, in, in, the, in the interim, I know that there's obviously the focus is on the rescue and the recovery, but this is such an important thoroughfare here in Baltimore for drivers, people trying to get around. How are they going to be able to manage while that is also going on? Yeah, so so we, we've also uh, already been in touch with people about alternative routes uh, and ways people can navigate uh, now that this tragedy has happened. And I don't know, Secretary, if you want to speak to that as well. Just to give you a sense of scale, roughly uh, about uh, 35,000 people you know, a day use that facility. About double that use the Harbor Tunnel, and double that again use the Fort McHenry Tunnel. So basically, we don't have those two other options. Uh, we'll, ha we'll make sure that we have as much uh, personnel out there to deal with any incidents, because as you know, that can cause the backups very quickly. And we will basically put out a lot of communication on different alternatives. We're also looking at transit alternatives as well. What role will the legislature play in this response? What role will the legislature play in this response? Are there any policies, any state funding that's going to be freed up in some of so, oh, yeah, no, so we're, we are, uh, in fact, you know, we have our, our Senate president here. We have members of the legislature here. The legislature is going to have a role uh, in all this, as will our local elected officials, as will state officials, as will the federal government. Uh, you know, everybody is going to have a role in terms of how we think about the rebuild. Governor, how long do you expect shipping to be closed down through the port? Do you have any estimate in terms of the, the port here? We, we, we don't at this point. But we no don't at this point. are going in or out at this time. Correct. Yeah, we have, and we, do, we don't have we don't have an estimate on timeline as of yet. Uh, our focus really is right now on just make sure we're saving lives. One last question. Did that person die in the hospital? Are they able to get out at all or no? I'm sorry, say it again. The ships that are the vessels that are currently docked at the port are they able to get out or no? Um, you, the the one that's that's uh, captured under the no. is that is that, is that still at port? Oh, no. yes, that one that one's still at port. Yes. We'll take one last question. One last question. Yes, ma'am. Was the ship being guided out by tugs, firstly? And secondly, did you just say that it issued a May Day in enough time that you were able to stop all traffic from entering both sides so that the only uh, casualties we expect are the workers on the bridge? Yes, ma'am. So the investigation is still going on, so we're going to have all the full details uh, and also all the full details about the timeline and the TikTok that took place. But we're thankful that between the May Day and the collapse, that, uh, that we had officials who were able to to begin to stop the flow of traffic so more cars would not end up on the bridge. And, and I can tell there were some on the bridge or not? Were there any? Well, during the collapse. Yeah, were there some on the bridge? There have been reports that have been sonar that have detected vehicles at the bottom of the water. So as well as the eight people, there could still be people trapped inside or potentially have died in vehicles. Is that correct? No, I, I think, well, the investigation is still going on. Uh, to find out exactly exactly how many people and what was situation, but the thing that we do know is that uh, is that uh, many of the vehicles were stopped before they got onto the bridge, which uh, which which uh, saved lives in a, in a in a very very heroic way. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. So much. you. We'll have another update Thank later. Thank you. Chris speaking. Hey Chuck.
Thank you.